In this video guide to regular expressions, I will discuss quantifiers. By the end of this video, you will understand everything about the quantifiers shown in this diagram. Quantifiers are used to quantify how many times a part of your regular expression should be repeated. Every time you want to repeat something in a regex, such as an individual character, a character class, or a sub-expression, you can write a quantifier after it to specify how many times it should be repeated. The following list shows some examples of the most common quantifiers. This video will only discuss these quantifiers within the context of Perl-like regular expressions, not POSIX regular expressions. This is worth mentioning, since the older POSIX style regular expression quantifiers lack certain features and have significantly different behavior in some cases. Most typical guides to regular expressions would probably start by immediately diving into a detailed description of what each of these symbols does. They would probably start by explaining the meaning of the star, plus, and question mark symbols. However, this won't be your typical guide to regular expressions. Once you understand what this quantifier does, you're already 50% done learning everything there is to know about quantifiers. Let's do a few examples. Assume you need to write a regular expression that can match both spellings of the word enroll. The word enroll can sometimes be spelled with one L or two Ls, depending on whether the author chooses to use British or American spelling conventions. Using this regex, you'll be able to match both spellings of enroll. In this case, the quantifier is the highlighted part you see here. This quantifier can be interpreted in English to mean whatever came just before this quantifier, repeated anywhere from one to two times. If you wanted to change the regex to also match any misspellings of the word enroll that have three L's, you could just change the upper bound of the range from two to three. And now, using this regex, you can match all three spellings of the word enroll. You could even go further and change the regex to include misspellings that don't have any L's at all by decreasing the lower bound of the range to zero. The pattern that this quantifier uses should now be a bit more obvious. Whenever we want to specify that the previous character can be repeated a lower bound of n times up to an upper bound of m times, we can write this quantifier after the character. Of course, the letters n and m are placeholders that are used to illustrate a point. In reality, you would never write this as a quantifier in your regular expression. You would write something like these examples or any other pair of positive integers. In order to make things crystal clear, there are a few cases where the endpoints of the range are not explicitly written, but are instead implied. The interpretation of this quantifier is to repeat the character A anywhere from it doesn't matter times to five times. Another way to describe the same thing would be to say, repeat the character A anywhere from zero times to five times which you could do with the following equivalent regex. You'll sometimes see the same thing with the upper bound of the range. In these cases, the upper bound of the range is assumed to be infinity. However, there is no equivalent way to write this explicitly. You simply can't write something like this, since most regex engines will default to interpreting the range quantifier as literal text if it doesn't see the format it expects. Therefore, when the upper bound of your range is infinity, you must simply omit the second number like this. One final important case to consider is when a single number is used to describe that the previous character should be matched exactly the number of times specified. For example, this regex will match any sequence of exactly four A characters. If we wanted to rewrite this using a range, we could write this, which means the same thing. Of the quantifiers we've reviewed so far, it should be clear that they can all be written in the following standardized form, where n is a positive integer, and m is a positive integer, or left blank to represent infinity. We still haven't discussed the meaning of the question mark, star, and plus quantifiers, so let's do that now. The question mark is just syntax trigger for this. The star is just syntax trigger for this and the plus character is just syntax trigger for this. Here's an example diagram that shows the question mark quantifier that makes the character A optional. As you can see, 
The control flow graph splits into two possible paths, one that skips the character A, and one that requires it. If one path fails, the regular expression engine simply backtracks the try the other path. Here is an example diagram that shows the plus quantifier that matches the character A one or more times. As you can see, the control flow graph starts by requiring an A character. If there are no A characters, it fails immediately. If there is at least one, control will split into two possible paths. One path goes back to try to get yet another A character, and the other continues with the rest of the regex. By default, the regex engine will first try the path that consumes yet another A character until there are no more left in the search text. Here is a diagram showing the star quantifier that matches an A character zero or more times. As you can see, the control flow graph starts by splitting into two possible paths. One path immediately continues with the rest of the regex. The other path attempts to consume an A character. By default, this quantifier will first try the path that consumes an A character. Once it fails to find another A character, it will give up and continue with the rest of the regex. Here is a table to summarize what we've learned so far. As discussed previously, quantifiers can be used to specify how many times a character in your regular expression can be repeated, but you can also apply quantifiers to character classes too. For example, you can use this regular expression to match chapter titles in a book, regardless of how many digits are in the chapter number. And most importantly, you can also apply a quantifier to a sub-expression to repeat the sequence of characters. For example, this regex will match any of the following strings. You can even apply quantifiers to a sub-expression that contains an alternation. This regex will match any of the following strings. Just as promised earlier, you're already 50% done learning everything there is to know about quantifiers. There are many more quantifiers than what we've seen so far, but fortunately, there are only four fundamental aspects to every regular expression quantifier, and you'll understand all of them by the end of this video. Here are those four aspects. Number one, the minimum number of times it can match. Number two, the maximum number of times it can match. Number three, whether it prefers to match as many times as possible, or as few times as possible. Number four, whether it will disable backtracking or not. As you can see, we've already covered the first two, so we're already 50% done. Now let's cover item number three from the list above, whether it prefers to match as many times as possible, or as few times as possible. Consider a case where we want to match this regular expression against this piece of text. This animation shows the matching process for this regex. Since this quantifier will match the A character anywhere from two times to four times, and the text we're searching starts with four consecutive A's, it's okay for the regular expression engine to go ahead and match all four of them. After matching the four A's, the quantifier has been satisfied, so we move forward to try and match this part of the regex. We've already consumed the four A's at the beginning of the string, so only the BBCC part remains. Therefore, the alternation can only make use of the BB part, which satisfies the overall regular expression, and the completed match is this. But what if we had been less greedy and decided to only accept two A characters at the beginning instead of all four of them? After all, two is inside the acceptable range that the quantifier allows. It turns out that if we did only match two characters, the overall regular expression would have been able to match this, instead of just this, and the resulting match would have been two characters longer. The overall conclusion here is that whenever you use a quantifier, there is an implicit question about whether you want the quantifier to prefer to match as many times as possible or as few times as possible. It turns out that every quantifier we've discussed so far will try to be greedy and match as many times as possible given the opportunity. Once again, here is the list of every quantifier we've seen so far. These quantifiers are all greedy by default, meaning that they will try to match as many times as possible. 
So how do you make them try to match as few times as possible? That's easy. Just add a question mark character after any quantifier. These are commonly known as lazy quantifiers. They're also sometimes called reluctant. As mentioned in the introduction, the older POSIX style regular expressions exhibit a number of differences. And this, along with the rest of the content in this video, is one such case. POSIX style regular expressions do not include support for the concept of greediness or laziness. And that's pretty much all there is to say about lazy quantifiers. There is still one remaining concept to consider when it comes to understanding quantifiers. Backtracking. When you use a quantifier like this, it will try to match as many as five times, but you still could end up with a match that only repeats two, three, or four times, depending on the text you're searching. In order to understand why you could end up with a number of repetitions that's in the middle of your range, like three or four in the example just mentioned, you need to understand the decisions that are made during the matching process. In a regex like this, the quantifier specifies that the first two A characters are mandatory. If the text being searched doesn't have at least two consecutive A's, the minimum specified by the quantifier range, the regex will fail to match completely, and there's nothing more to consider. If it does have at least two A characters, immediately after it accepts these two A's, the regex engine has to start making choices. Should I stay here and keep trying to match A characters? Or should I take what I've got and move on to try to match this part instead? This potential choice is considered every single time another optional character is accepted by a quantifier once it has satisfied the minimum number of repetitions that are required by its range. For greedy quantifiers, the default first choice is to always try to get more. For lazy quantifiers, the default first choice is to always take what you've got and try to continue. For greedy quantifiers, whenever the regex engine makes one of these choices, it will save what it was doing at that time so it can possibly backtrack to the same position and possibly try the other option. This backtracking will need to happen if it ends up discovering that taking too much causes the entire match to fail. It will then retry the rest of the match by taking one less at that position. For the lazy case, it's the opposite. It will remember to backtrack and take one more repetition if taking too little causes the entire match to fail. There are occasionally situations where you'd like a quantifier to try and greedily match as many times as possible, but also to never give up any of the characters it has already matched, and instead fail the overall match instead of trying to backtrack. For example, consider the process of trying to match this regex against this piece of text. This animation shows a visualization of the matching process. As you can see from the animation, the regex never matches the search string, but it spends a huge amount of time backtracking. In this case, this quantifier is greedy, so it will go ahead and try to consume as many of the A characters as it's allowed to before moving on to the next pattern. It just so happens that the pattern after this quantifier consists of a long string of A's, and there aren't enough A's to share between both parts of the pattern. In fact, the regex engine will first try the search by choosing 10 A's, only realizing at the Z character that it's made a mistake. Then it tries again with nine, then with eight, and so on, until it tries to consume one, and only then does it realize that the entire pattern won't match and fail. In this case, a possessive quantifier can be used to speed up the process of failure. It does this by disabling the ability to backtrack and reattempt the rest of the match with one less repetition. For this use case of possessive quantifiers, we are only concerned with speeding up failing matches rather than matching something different. Here are a few examples to show the contrast between regular greedy and possessive quantifiers in this case. As you can see, using a possessive quantifier will still cause the match to fail if it also failed when using a greedy quantifier. But now, it will also fail in cases where a greedy quantifier would have consumed too much on its first attempt. Any quantifier can be made possessive by simply sticking a plus character on the end of it. I will suggest, rather opinionatedly, that possessive quantifiers aren't particularly useful. Many things that you might want to do with a possessive quantifier can likely be accomplished by another method. It is also true that many modern regular expression engines use optimizations and algorithmic tricks that often, 
but not always, make manual optimizations like this unnecessary. Still, this guide would not be complete without discussing possessive quantifiers from our list of the four fundamental aspects of quantifiers, item number three was about preferring to take as few as possible versus as many as possible. Item number four was about the option to disable backtracking or not. In terms of discussing these two remaining aspects, we have so far considered these three possible combinations, as many as possible with backtracking allowed, requiring nothing after the quantifier, as few as possible with backtracking allowed, with a question mark after the quantifier, as many as possible with backtracking not allowed, with a plus after the quantifier, but we're missing one combination. What about as few as possible with backtracking not allowed? Is there any quantifier symbol for that? No, there isn't. At least no one has invented it yet, which is exactly what I'm going to do right now, right here in this video. Introducing the pile of poo quantifier. Similarly to how it's done with lazy and possessive quantifiers, the pile of poo quantifier is described by taking one of our familiar quantifiers and putting a pile of poo emoji character after it. Now let's take a moment to consider the properties of this quantifier. It is a lazy quantifier that always takes as few characters as possible, and it does not allow backtracking. So a quantifier like this would match the first three repetitions of the letter A, and then opt to try and continue matching the rest of the regular expression without trying any more repetitions. Since this quantifier disables backtracking though, it can never attempt to backtrack if it finds that it needs to accept more A characters to match the overall regular expression. Instead, it just accepts three A's and then continues with the rest of the regex. If the rest of the regex fails, that's it. There will be no match. Therefore, this quantifier is really just going to do the same thing as this quantifier. So there is really no reason to invent this quantifier at all, which is probably why no one ever did, since it doesn't do anything new. The greedy version of this quantifier, the possessive quantifier, does make sense, since the number of matched optional repetitions can be different each time. Something that was hinted at in the previous section, but not adequately discussed, is the fact that this quantifier and this quantifier are special cases. As we discussed previously, any quantifier can be associated with a min and a max number of acceptable repetitions. This quantifier is an interesting special case when we consider greediness, laziness, and backtracking. Most regular expression engines support these quantifiers. But in reality, there is no difference between greedy, lazy, or possessive quantifiers when the upper limit and the lower limit of the range are equal. For this range, the first n repetitions are always mandatory, and there are no optional repetitions. In this case, the regular expression engine will never have to make any decisions or backtrack, so these extra matching preferences don't matter. Here is a summary table that provides an overview of the four possible combinations of greedy, lazy, enabled or disabled backtracking. It should be pointed out that most people would get confused if you called the possessive quantifier greedy, since these three different types of quantifiers have taken on the colloquial names of greedy, lazy, and possessive. However, I do think that it makes sense to say, descriptively, that possessive quantifiers are greedy in the sense that they take the locally available best solution at every step, which is really what the definition of a greedy algorithm is. Therefore, I believe that the column for as many or as few as possible should really be called greedy or lazy instead, but I did not name it this way to avoid creating confusion. Here is a summary of all quantifiers that we have reviewed in this video.